Hi, I'm Wendy Chung. I'm a clinical geneticist here at Columbia University. We've prepared the following video to explain something called secondary findings, which we sometimes identify in the process of a genetic test called exome sequencing. What I mean by secondary findings is that there's a list of conditions for which the laboratory will look to see if there might be a genetic risk factor for you or another family member in the process of also going through and doing exome sequencing. You'll be learning more about what these secondary findings are, what the implications are for you and for other family members, and ultimately you'll may need to make a decision about whether or not you'd like to have these types of results returned to you. We hope you find this video informative, and certainly feel free to watch it again if you need to review the information again. This is a video about secondary findings detected with exome sequencing. In the Genetics 101 and Exome Sequencing videos, we talked about the basics of genetics and exome sequencing. If you have questions about the information discussed in this video, please watch Genetics 101 or Exome Sequencing for a refresher. You are watching this video because you or someone in your family is having exome sequencing to look at all 20,000 genes. This testing is being done because you or your family member has a medical condition that we think may have a genetic cause, and we are doing exome sequencing to try to identify the causative genetic mutation. This testing is either as part of a research study that you are enrolled in, or a clinical test at a clinical laboratory. As part of this exome test, you have the option to ask us to look for other genetic mutations that might affect your health, for which there are steps that you can take to stay healthy. These other genetic mutations are called secondary findings. Though this is not the main reason for getting tested, these other genetic mutations may be revealed by the comprehensive genetic test that you are having. The additional genetic results that we could find would be unrelated to the main medical condition that led you to have exome sequencing. What exactly does it mean when we say secondary finding? One way to better understand what is meant by secondary findings is to think of an everyday example where you may have encountered this idea. One example of secondary findings in everyday life would be if you took your car in for an oil change and while they are changing the oil, you ask them to look for other problems. If the mechanic found problems with your car other than the oil needing changing, these other findings would be secondary findings. Some of these issues might be very important for the car to work properly or for your safety. Examples of problems or secondary findings that the mechanic may find include a problem with your brake pads, which could put your safety at risk if the brakes failed, or there could be a problem with your car battery, which may cause your car to not start one day. These other problems are unrelated to why you took your car in, but you might want to learn about them. Similarly, when you have your exome sequenced, you can ask your geneticist to have the laboratory look for a small number of secondary findings, unrelated to the main reason you are having the test. There are 57 genes, or 57 of these extra secondary genes, that we can look at to check for genetic mutations. These genes could provide us information about 24 different genetic diseases. The test allows us to look at all 57 genes, or none of them, but you are not able to pick and choose which you want to know about and which you do not. For instance, you can ask to have both the brakes and the battery checked, but you cannot have just one of them checked. What type of secondary genetic results could we find in your exome sequencing if we looked at these 57 genes? We could find a genetic mutation that affects you directly by increasing your risk to develop a genetic disease. That genetic mutation may also increase the chance that other family members could be at risk for a disease, including your children. Some of these diseases cause symptoms in children, some cause symptoms only in adults, and some can cause symptoms in either children or adults. Therefore, it is important for you to think about all of the people who might be affected by your decision. 
genetic tests can tell us information not only about you, but also about your family. You may be wondering what specific types of diseases these secondary findings might tell us about. About half of the genes on the secondary finding list are for cancers, including breast cancer, ovarian cancer, thyroid cancer, and colon cancer. Knowing about these mutations may be of use to you so that you can increase your screening for these types of cancers. Most but not all types of cancers can be screened to improve the chance of early detection. In some cases, individuals might have surgery to remove healthy tissue to reduce the risk to develop cancer, but this is only a good option for some types of cancer. Many of the other secondary findings may indicate an increased risk of problems with the heart. Some of these problems could rarely be fatal and associated with sudden, unexpected death. In some cases, we have ways to prevent the sudden death that can result from the heart condition by screening earlier with EKGs or heart imaging tests. In some circumstances, we have treatments for the heart condition, but the disease may progress despite treatment, leading to heart failure. Finally, we might detect a genetic mutation that indicates that you are at risk to have a very severe response to certain types of medications that doctors use for putting people to sleep during surgery. If known ahead of time, these problems can be avoided by the anesthesiologist. Let's review what we have just talked about. We can look for mutations that tell us about a high risk for cancer, heart problems, or reactions to medications. If you decide to ask us to look for the secondary findings in these 57 genes, the results will tell you only about your risk for these specific genetic diseases. The results will not tell you if you definitely will or definitely will not develop the disease, when they might develop, or how severe it might be. For instance, if we detect a genetic mutation, this means that you are at an increased risk of developing the genetic disease. However, though your risk for developing the disease is higher than someone without the genetic mutation, it is still possible that you will never develop the disease. We also might not find any mutation. If you are found to be negative for any genetic mutation in these genes, you are less likely to develop a disease that is caused by one of these 57 genes specifically. However, most people who develop the health problems that we discussed, including cancer and heart disease, develop the problems for other reasons besides mutations in these genes. Therefore, if we do not report a genetic mutation, it does not guarantee that you will not develop these diseases. You still need to watch what you eat, exercise, and follow your doctor's advice about screening for cancer and heart disease.